Doc, I don't know if I can do this. I want to be able to eat foods that I like. I'm tired of watching everything I eat. I'm tired of having to check my blood sugars. I'm just tired of it all. And I'm, I'm afraid that I'm doing all this, restricting myself, and that I'm still going to lose my toe and maybe even my foot in the future. Just, I, I, I don't know anymore. Well, this was a lament from a patient that I had recently. I'm taking care of his uh, foot infection. Um, he, his diabetes has been uncontrolled for quite some time. And so unfortunately, we're struggling with this foot infection, but getting better, but he's feeling a bit despondent. And so I had to tell him, no, no, you can eat things that you enjoy, but you have to know the smart ways of eating foods that could potentially carry up your blood sugar. But there's a way to do it sometimes where you don't have to suffer con the consequences of high blood sugar. And so in today's video, that's what I'm going to talk about. I shared with him five things that he can do to have his body soak in or absorb less of the sugar from his plate. Before we get into it, I'm Dr. Amina Gooden, a physician and a health coach. And among other things, I help people with high blood sugar readings bring those levels back down to normal where they belong without having to take more medicines. Why I get blood sugar levels down to normal? So that you can have great energy levels throughout the day, so that you can control food cravings and avoid weight gain, especially as you grow older, and so that you can generally live a longer, much healthier life. All right, blood sugar, that's such a big topic. One of the things I, I spend half my time doing in the hospital is telling and teaching and helping people to learn how to eat in a way that their blood sugar does not go up as much and at the same time they're not totally restricting themselves and being completely uncomfortable. But this man needed a bit of a reminder because you know we teach things and it's hard to remember everything and so repetition. With repetition you will eventually get it right. So how do we block sugar from going into the bloodstream? You know, we have sugar, all our meals will have sugar as much as we try to limit added sugars, we still get sugar from starch that we eat. And so what are some of the things that we can do so that when this all this sugar gets broken down into the, in the intestines, it doesn't all come flooding into the bloodstream? One of the things that I talk about a lot is um, f increasing fiber intake. Now, when you have a lot of fiber, fiber is a starch, yeah, a carbohydrate rather, but it doesn't get broken down by our bodies and so it's not going to be absorbed and cause sugar. Thing about fiber is because it's not broken down or rather because it's not absorbed into our system, having fiber with the food actually dilutes the amount of sugar. It dilutes the starch, it dilutes the amount of sugar in the food. And so because the food is diluted by the star by the fiber, the it, it has to jostle all the f sugar that we're getting and starch it has to jostle through all that fiber it's like you know having being having a playing field a clear field versus a forest if you're going from one end of the field to another if it's forested you're gonna have to be dodging trees and branches and shrubbery and so on but if it's a clear um field with just grass it's gonna you're gonna quickly get from one end to the next without you know much without any jostling really right so it's the same thing when you have food with fiber the the sugar within the food will have to take a while to get from within the intestines through to across to the gut wall and then into the bloodstream compared to if there's no fiber not much jostling so that sugar is going to get to the wall of the gut very easily and quickly and so because it's there it's going to soak through right so having fiber really is an obstacle course for the sugar to get through the gut wall and into the bloodstream so that was one of the things i told him i said look you you just have to have more fiber yes you're having tortillas and tacos and things like that but you must increase the amount of fiber so i, I said I told, I told him i'm not telling you you cannot have your tortillas and tacos i'm telling you to have it with some salad start with a salad so that you have more of an obstacle course so now when you have the tortillas it's not going to carry your blood sugar up as high and because your intestines are moving things down you're going to have more of the tortillas getting further down the intestines and ultimately passing out rather than all of it being absorbed because of this obstacle course that you're setting up inside okay second thing i told him to do was to as much as a lot of diabetics are taught and conditioned to be afraid of fat you must have fat it like healthy naturally occurring fat in your foods foods without fat are foods that are not going to be as satisfying so 
fat causes you to feel a little more satisfied earlier. Another thing with fat in food as well is that it actually decreases the emptying of the stomach. So, or rather slows down the stomach emptying. So if you're having food and you have with that some fatty meat and some avocado, some olives and whatever, it, you use butter to cook it or whatever, because this fat now within the stomach and all the other food is gonna take a longer time. It's gonna basically send a signal to close off that that opening that the opening for the stomach into the small intestines that muscle is going to be tightened and kept tightened for a longer time and then the food will stay in your stomach it will be digested because your food is staying in your stomach longer it means that you you're still eating but you're getting full you're going to get full quicker because the food did not move out into the small intestines quick at that quicker rate right to make space for more food so essentially including naturally occurring fat with your food is going to decrease the emptying of your stomach if your stomach is not emptying down into the intestines as quickly right that's where absorption happens the sugar now gets to the gut wall the wall of the small intestines and it's from there that it's absorbed into the circulation into the bloodstream if it's going into that area more slowly then it's being absorbed much more slowly all right so increase fat um another thing with fat as well having fat in your meals naturally occurring fat is that it can actually in addition to slowing the emptying of the stomach it can actually somehow partially block right partially block those channels that take glucose that take sugar across into the bloodstream so this has this sort of double way of working to decrease the sugar going into your bloodstream at the end of a meal right third thing i told him and he actually said he was doing this i said you know there's uh, there's a real uh, benefit to vinegar and many of you probably have seen this on the internet where people can take apple cider vinegar and that decreases the amount of sugar going into your bloodstream. He's been taking apple cider vinegar capsules, um, or yeah, capsules, I think he said, tablets he said, but I think they come as capsules, but you can just buy a bottle of apple cider vinegar, it's always gonna be cheaper, and you take about a tablespoon or so, put it in, mix it in a cup of water, drink it with a straw to protect your teeth, because it's acidic, so you don't wanna, over time, damage the enamel on your teeth, right? But the thing about apple cider vinegar is that it actually blocks the enzyme. That it's not, 100% clear how it works to decrease the sugar going into your bloodstream but it's felt that the main way is that it blocks that enzyme that breaks down starch and so if starch is not being broken down it means that it, you cannot absorb it because starch has to be broken down into its simplest form which is glucose and then you can absorb the glucose that simple sugar across the gut wall and into your blood if it's not being broken down it means it's moving further down your stomach and so you have less of it um, more of it passing out and less of it going across the gut wall as sugar okay so vinegar you can take that as well to decrease the amount of sugar soaking into your bloodstream and he's actually doing that one he was pleased to hear that that's something that could potentially help okay the fourth thing is to increase the protein increase the amount of protein that you're eating so a lot of times starch forms the bulk of a meal the tortillas the rice um the potatoes all these things because starch is the most abundant and also the cheapest macronutrient right but we always have to remember that especially if we're worrying about blood sugars we have to can include some of the other macronutrients in the meals so protein specifically take a lot of energy so you might have a meal with starch and other things but protein of all the macronutrients protein actually takes a lot more energy to digest to break down so having protein means that you're going to burn up some of that sugar that is on your plate without having that go into your bloodstream and cause your blood sugar levels to go up high because at the end of the day you're just using more of the energy that you have on board okay um so uh yeah and, and also just the fact that protein itself just decreases ex extends digestion it just lengthens the period of digestion and also you can think of protein too as diluting the amount of starch in your system just like how fiber dilutes it, it it spreads them apart okay protein can do the same thing and then lastly the good thing one good thing as well about protein is that it also makes you feel full quicker even quicker than uh fat protein causes you to feel more satisfied pretty early in a meal right 
And then the last thing I told him uh, is about drinking tea. Surprisingly, green tea has and green tea has many antioxidants. And one of the antioxidants in green tea actually um, is associated with decreased blood sugar readings after a meal. Now he told me he buys tea on sweet tea but um, he buys black tea. There's something special about green tea and many of y'all could have heard of it, but green tea um, has uh, antioxidants that block the enzyme that is responsible for taking sugar or glucose across the intestinal wall and into the bloodstream. Now, all these things work. Um, it's You're not gonna take green tea as your cure-all, okay? All these things together over time help these things help your body to be more efficient in how it processes sugar and how your metabolism works and your digestion and so on, right? So together you can employ as many of these um, these things or hacks as some people will call them to overall have your body soak in or absorb less sugar and so that your blood sugar readings in your, the levels in your blood don't jump up quite as high but can be a little more stable um, and steady okay and hopefully overall at the end of the day the diabetes will be better so the patient he was pretty happy to hear about some of these things he was also happy to hear that he didn't quite have to give up all the things that he likes obviously I encouraged him to not uh, be excessive in the amount of tortillas and and rice and and so on and so forth and also encourage him or let him know that you know incorporating protein and even healthy naturally occurring fats will cause him to get full quicker and also that satisfaction or satiety will last for many more hours compared with to the satiety or satisfaction that you get after predominantly a starchy meal which basically has you hungry in about two hours maybe three hours if you're lucky okay so i hope you all found this helpful for those of you who are feeling pretty hopeless and just just annoyed and sad um and maybe even victimized about the fact that you have to watch what you eat you yes we all should watch what we eat but you can sometimes enjoy some of those things that might generally be seen as bad for you you can enjoy them if you do other things with it um run, running through the five things quickly have more fiber have more healthy naturally occurring fat have vinegar consider having vinegar before a meal apple cider vinegar um, um number four is have more protein with your meals and then number five is consider green tea as a part of your regimen in terms of your drinks green tea on sweetened green tea hope you found this helpful share it with somebody who you uh, know would benefit from it and i will see you on the next video bye